What is going on guys? It's your boy Killer Cam back with another Royal Rumble review. Today we are talking about the 2010 Royal Rumble. I think this was the third Blu-ray released in North America. And the, the reason I love this is because of this right here. It has the whole episode of Raw and SmackDown leading up to this show. Now I have not gotten a chance to view this, but I have seen the 2010 Rumble, but I have not seen the Raw and SmackDown. I might check that out and do a review of it. As a matter of fact, sometime later on, because that's the 10 year anniversary of those shows is coming up. But I will briefly talk about those for a minute. But, um, Royal Rumble 2010 to me, and I always have loved this poster because the winner of the Rumble match himself is not even on this poster, it's Edge. Edge made a return in 2010. You know, you see, you got all of the guys that's on this poster. And it says, I am the one. But yet, there is not a single mention of the actual Rumble, which is what I love. The Royal Rumble, to me, is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I love it, and I cannot wait until Sunday watching the... Um, 2020. So this actually took place on the 31st. This event will be 10 years old, which is hard to believe because I remember seeing this live at my grandma's house uh, and going so crazy over Edge winning. Uh, it was it was crazy to me how much time does fly. Uh, and you know, going in, you know, nobody expected Edge. You know, it was you had John Cena, who could have won it. Obviously, you had Batista. You had Chris Jericho, you had Shawn Michaels, you even had Triple H as a dark horse, in a way. You know, and, and it was just, it was weird to see. You know, nobody nobody expected Edge to come back, which was always cool. Uh, anyway, opening match of the night was the ECW Championship. You had uh, Christian taking on Ezekiel Jackson. I almost said Ezekiel Elliott, but uh, Ezekiel Jackson. Um, unfortunately, ECW only had about another month after this before NXT would take over in February which uh, I might review too the first episode of NXT uh, Christian I mean excuse me William Regal failed to win the ECW title from Christian in the fall of 09 so they tried it out with Ezekiel Jackson Christian won this match in about in about 12 minutes there was nothing really special here in this match uh, Christian ended up winning it with the kill switch uh and ended up winning this match. Um, it was pretty cool. Like I said, nothing special. Uh, just a good match overall. Um, Christian is a guy who doesn't really have bad matches. Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel Jackson did kind of work the back uh, throughout and focused on it late. This this match overall gets three stars to me. It was it was really decent overall. Uh, SmackDown General Manager Teddy Long had the bragging rights trophy in the back. He was talking to the ECW General Manager. Crime Time comes in, and uh, they each want Kali's spot by offering a kiss to Tiffany or whatever, or Kali does whatever. Uh, the Miz takes on MVP for the United States Championship. Um, I forget how this rivalry came back to be, but uh, Miz ended up winning in seven and a half. Uh, this match gets a star, a one point seven five out of five. Um, uh, MVP can work a good match, and Miz was just starting to hit his stride. Miz would actually be WWE champion later on in the year, and you would see in 2011 when Miz would defend the title. Uh, I don't even think Miz... Yeah, Miz wasn't even on the poster at this point, which is crazy to me to believe. Um, Miz was just being an arrogant douche here, like he always is most of the time during his heel run, but I love the Miz. Miz is one of my favorite uh, wrestlers, but he's just... His character. But he's so talented in the ring. Uh, surprisingly, the crowd boos. This is a clear indicator that face MVP was not working at all. Uh, Big Show and Jericho had a segment backstage. 
he said he had more chemistry with the Miz than he did Jericho. I I kind of like Jericho a little bit more than Cho Miz, but um, this was an odd cut cutting away. Randy Orton is walking towards the arena. Ted DiBiase says Cody is plotting something against him, while Cody said Ted is plotting something against him. WWE Championship. Um, WWE Championship match, excuse me. I don't know why I lost my train of thought there. Uh, Sheamus against Randy Orton. Sheamus was the fastest rising star in WWE. He had beaten John Cena the month prior in a tables match at TLC. Uh, Sheamus won this match by disqualification. I always hate DQ finishes. Uh, I hate it. But here the finish made sense. It did. Um, Basically... Uh, Cody Rhodes appeared and struck Sheamus outside um, but Cody as Orton strikes with an RKO but DQ is called because it set up the legacy breakup angle uh, which legacy would never be the same DBIC and Rhodes would never be the same that group was always about Orton which I hate the way they did it they should have built like they did with Evolution where it made Batista and Orton as stars they should have made um, they should have made DiBiase and Road stars, but it ended up not doing that, and it was, it was weird how it ended up not doing that. But they ended up not even making them stars. It sucks, but it's the way it was. I mean, they set up a triple threat, and Randy Orton and uh, DiBiase and Rhodes all had a triple threat match at WrestleMania 26. Um, next up, you have Leku. Well, Leku was all bugging about Piggy James or whatever. Michelle McCool took on Mickey James for the Women's Championship. And how how far the Divas division has gone in the last 10 years is crazy to me. Basically, Layla came out in a big fat suit dressed as Mickey James. The real Mickey James arrives, takes down Layla with a Luthes press, right hands. The bell rings. McCool hits Layla and eats a DDT and that's it. This match was 21 seconds long. More of a segment than an angle. This is a dud, no rating, 20 seconds. Uh, Mickey James is the new women's champion. Uh, this was very short, but it was fine. The the mean girls, as you could say, get their come up, it's, which is how it should have been. Um, the other divas come out with cake and hold Lake Cool in place while Mickey drives it in their face. Next up, you have the World Heavyweight Championship match, The Undertaker versus Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, to me, literally had no chance in this match, but it was pretty cool the way that it set up because, you know, you really thought, you know, Rey was actually in this match and actually really did a good story of Rey could win this. Um, The Undertaker ended up actually winning this match, though, um, with a last ride instead of a tombstone, which was weird. He won it with a last ride. Despite the clash of styles, I really like this. Nobody bought Mysterio as a threat. Uh, but seeing the blood and the double 619 was really cool. Undertaker was nearing the end of his full-time run, and he was slowing down. But this gets 3.25 out of 5. I mean, it was it was a good world championship bout. It really, really was. And they, they really had the con- contrasting of styles, the David versus Goliath going on, and I think that that was something that was really interesting to see was David versus Goliath. Uh, you have Shawn Michaels backstage when Kane comes up, and Shawn says he's obsessed with winning and obsessed with The Undertaker. Basically, Taker had beaten Michaels at WrestleMania 25, and Michaels wanted another shot at Taker, but the only way to get it would be for him to win the, win the Royal Rumble and go after Taker, who was the world champion at the time. But he would end up costing Taker the Elimination Chamber, and him and Michaels would go on and have a streak versus career match because Sean would not win. You'd have um, Dolph Ziggler and Evan Bourne start out the Rumble match. Punk would arrive at number three, uh, and the Straight Edge Messiah, and he was basically talking about how Zack Ryder had potential. You have potential. Great Khali came in, and uh, Punk got a little scared. Beth Phoenix ended up kissing Khali, and the whole thing was was just weird. Um, Zack Ryder, JTG came out. Triple H came out and tossed out uh, Punk. Um you had other guys come out. MVP attacked Miz and eliminated himself. Um, you had John Cena, Shawn Michaels. Really, there was a couple of stories here. Because you had you had the story with Shawn Michaels, who wanted to win the Rumble. You had the story with Jericho and Edge, when Edge came back. 
you had the story with John Cena, what his path to WrestleMania was going to be. You know, you had the story with both legacy members in the match. Could they step out of the shadow of Orton? Um, you had Batista. I always wondered though why they did Edge at 29 instead of number 30. But I, I guess they just wanted to pop in there. This is easily one of my favorite Rumble matches. I love the fact that you had CM Punk dominate early on. And then you had the history with Beth Phoenix participating. The amazing story with Shawn Michaels. And then having Edge return... Uh, while this rumble, while the rumble is always fun, I love this one because, like I said, it told multiple stories in the match. And whenever you have a rumble match that can tell multiple stories, this even st- uh, told more stories to me than 2009. Just because um, 09 was very predictable in a way in which you kind of knew, hey, it's going to be Orton that wins. But this was very, very underrated. Four and a half stars. Match of the night. I love this rumble match. Uh, with the amount of stories it told... Overall, I have to give this score eight point an eight out of ten. One of the best rumble matches ever. Uh, I'd say it's my um, maybe third, anywhere between three and five on the list. Uh, that being said, the rest of the show is solid. Uh, skip the U.S. title match and the women's championship match, but it, but the ECW and WWE title matches are solid. Uh, Undertaker's taking on Mysterio is something you don't see often and it's very, very good. This show is overlooked, but it's worth it, checking it out. And also, I'm going to check out some of the Raw and, Raw and SmackDown that's up here and I might give a review of that. Um, but real quick, I will run over that real quick. The Raw before this, uh, you had John Cena versus Sheamus, DX versus Legacy, Kofi Kingston versus Miz, the semifinals of the uh, Divas Championship Tournament, John Cena confronting Mr. McMahon about Bret Hart and more. Then, then the SmackDown, you had Triple H versus Punk, Michaels versus Mysterio, Intercontinental Championship match, McIntyre versus Morrison, and R Truth versus Jericho and more. So, overall, great show. When we get into 2011, we'll talk about the 40 man rumble. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. As always, it's been your boy Killer Camp. Peace. I'm out.